Hey, welcome back to my channel. I'm Linz, and this video is going to be a little bit different than what I normally post on this channel. For the 45 or so subscribers I have, I'm super grateful for you guys. Every time I got a new sub, it really made my day. It made me really happy and excited. Um, but when I was posting vintage Polly Pocket videos, I didn't really have a direction of where I wanted this channel to go. I was kind of just learning how to edit and having fun with it. This was just a place for me to put those videos. Now I actually do have an idea in mind of what I want this channel to be. So things are going to change a little bit. And I'm hoping you guys stick around for it still. If not, that's okay. So as you can tell from the title of this video, it's not any kind of review. This is going to be an ongoing project for myself. I am rebuilding myself, in a sense, to go back to pole dancing, and to explain why I'm rebuilding myself, I'm going to have to give some background information and some history. So I want to take you guys on a little bit of a story time and just explain what this whole new thing is going to be and go from there. Okay, so in my childhood, I was a naturally flexible kid. I was in school gymnastics. I wasn't very good. I was actually just afraid to do a lot of the stuff most of the time, or like too embarrassed to do any of the stuff in front of my teammates. So I just didn't do much of anything, except stretch and work out. And... I was also a really sick kid. I dealt with asthma growing up and always sucked at like the school running tests. Always failed them. But I did learn some stuff from gymnastics and I told myself after high school that if I ever had a chance to do adult gymnastics or anything of the sort, I would go into it and actually try and not be scared and trust myself. And in college, there was a free gym on our campus, and so I took advantage of that. And this was about 2013, and I graduated high school in 2006, so seven years. While I was at the college campus gym, I was running and I actually got myself down to an eight and a half minute mile, which was pretty huge for me. I also incorporated a lot of HIIT workouts, high intensity interval training workouts, into my weekly gym routine just to start building strength and I really started to enjoy fitness and seeing the changes that were happening in my body and my health. When I graduated college, I took the running and the HIIT workouts with me and continued doing them for a little while, but it was about 2014 that I started to get really bored with, with that. I, I loved running and I loved doing the HIITs, but I just felt like I needed something new, something more. And so I came across a Groupon for some pole fitness classes down in Minneapolis. And from the very first class, I was hooked. I thought it was just so much fun, and it took a lot of strength and power, and I was really happy that I had been working out before this. Pole ended up coming very naturally to me. I excelled very quickly in learning the move, 
patterns and the techniques and putting combinations together. I already had strength and endurance from the running and the hits. And as a naturally flexible person, by consistently stretching, I was showing really, really great progress. And to me, it was a little bit like gymnastics, in a sense. I liked to think of it as vertical gymnastics, and to me it was like my second chance at gymnastics, so I really embraced it and did my best to visually study and practice consistently and really put all of myself into it and not be scared and not and and just trust myself in what I was doing. In October of 2014, our studio did a Halloween showcase and it was in that first performance I did where I think the real love for it truly started to blossom because I learned how to do a routine from beginning to end and I got to perform that routine for crowd a crowd of people and initiate a reaction out of them and I got to be a character that I had just so much fun playing when it comes to public speaking I'm not very good this is hard for me like as you can tell I don't really like to look at the camera I don't oh it's just it's hard but with performing, I really just fell in love with the whole process of it and being on stage and sharing that story. And so it was after that Halloween performance where I realized, okay, like I want to do this again. There's a competition coming up in May of 2015. And I could do this. I could, I could compete. I could have fun with this. And overall, it was a really good experience. I'm very happy that I did it. I learned a lot of things from it. And looking back, my routine is really hard to watch without cringing. But I, like I said, I learned a lot. And there are things I know now that I didn't know then. And... That just means I can make the next performance even better. So we competed as like a team. Like our studio had a bunch of girls that decided to compete. I think because we all had so much fun in that Halloween showcase. So we competed in May. And it was at the end of May 2015. Once we were back... I just decided to like split my time between practicing pole, running, and continuing doing HIIT workouts. Um, so from May of the end of May 2015, so June 2015, to November of 2015, I really just did those three things. I ran, I I was either at the gym or doing a HIIT workout in my house. Um, I was either at the studio polling or in my house polling because I have my own pole. And uh, running, outside running. And really what I was doing with that time was trying to decide and prepare for the next performance or competition that I wanted to do. So... I was just kind of gathering more strength and I was cleaning up moves and building endurance, basically. And then I was working on flexibility in there, too, just to keep increasing it so that I could do more moves and make old moves look even better. But then in, well, technically, I know the date... On November 28th of 2015, it was actually Black Friday, I was at home practicing 
on my pole, and I was doing a move called a True Grip Aisha. If I can find a picture of it, I will insert it. And this was a move that was very easy for me at this point, very solid. I was very comfortable in this move. And it was a complete accident that I fell out of it. And I fell onto my back. And instantly I knew something was wrong. So thankfully my mom was home at the time that I fell. So she came upstairs and I asked her for an ice pack. And while she was grabbing that, I told myself, okay, move your feet. Move your toes, move your feet. And I could do that. So I was like, okay, no matter what else is wrong, you can move your feet. Can you move your knees, like from your knees down? And I could do that, but I couldn't move from my hips. So that was when I was like, okay, yep, confirmed. Something is incredibly wrong. There's no way I can make it, like, to the hospital on my own. I can't walk. My mom can't lift me. Like, I need an ambulance. So, ambulance came, took me to the hospital. And, CT scan showed that I had something called a burst fracture in my first lumbar. So, I did a number on myself. Um... And the reason I couldn't really move from my hips was there was a tiny piece of bone sticking into my cord. Either in the cord or pushing on it. They never really told me. They were just surprised that I could move my legs. So they set me up in the hospital bed for that night and gave me some really good drugs. And I remember them constantly checking on me until the morning when I had my surgery and they gave me a spinal fusion. So I am fused from T11 to L3 and I'll also put up x-rays for you guys to see too. So that really sucked because here I was like preparing to, you know, kick butt in another competition and routine and performance and all of a sudden game over in a sense. Could have been worse. So I was home about the second week of December 2015 still, and I was in a back brace, lovely back brace, um, which I still have to this day. And I was laid up in bed. I was able to move. They gave me a walker. They wanted me to move. They wanted me to move around. They wanted me to walk. Not far, but just in my house. And that's what I did for like a month, <laughs> just kind of laid around. Um, but that was, that was rough, but that was also when I realized what an awesome group of friends I had around me because so many girls came and just sat with me on my bed and spent hours just hanging out with me. And, but I will say, even with all of that support, I still felt very alone. And it was a very hard thing to, like, mentally go through. I was out of the back brace by March of 2016. And basically just assigned to physical therapy for eight weeks at that point. So after March of 2016, I was doing physical therapy and really taking it easy. I was walking a lot, like outside, without a walker, so just kind of going for long walks almost every day. And I was just working on flexibility because having your muscles cut into really messes you up. And... After surgery, I couldn't even touch my toes. So, 
that was like my main focus was getting some of my flexibility back. I wanted to go back to pool, but I wasn't mentally ready to be back in that arena again, watching everybody do the things that I couldn't do anymore was really difficult. I had to unfollow a lot of people on my Instagram because it really just hurt my heart (laughs) to have lost all of the stuff that I had been able to do. It was gone overnight and that was a really challenging aspect of it. And then there was also this sense of embarrassment, too, that I allowed this to happen to myself. In a sense, I kind of blamed myself. And I just couldn't... I couldn't put myself back in it at that point. And it was incredibly isolating. No one around me really knew everything that I was thinking and feeling and that made me feel very alone. I don't want to take away from the support group that I said I had because they are still around me to this day and I'm very thankful for them but I felt very alone at the same time. So really at that point I was kind of just like I need a break I need to just change my life a little bit and kind of just needed to get away. So I actually made a big move and I went out to California to be with my boyfriend at the time. In July of 2016, I was officially in California and I was training and teaching at a studio near the town I lived in, but it just wasn't the same. I think now... I can admit that I went back too fast. I mean, it hadn't even been a full year since my accident, and I was already in a studio doing tricks, retraining things that I was going upside down. I was doing some pretty good stuff. But physically, I hadn't even fully healed I think I wanted to believe that I had fully healed, but I hadn't. And mentally, I wasn't prepared then to not be the same pole dancer that I had been, if that makes sense. I I wanted to go back to the Lindsay before my accident. And I hadn't really accepted or adjusted my thinking to the fact that that changed me completely. And I might never be the same person or dancer that I was prior to this injury. I just, I wasn't ready. I should have taken more time. And that's something I know now and something I can share with anybody else who might be going through some kind of injury and recovery and just know that it's okay to take a minute and breathe and you don't have to dive back in right away. Like it, it is okay to, it's okay to miss it and it's okay to not do it right away. So, basically, in October of 2016, I was kind of just like, this isn't the same. I don't have the same group of people. I don't have the same skills. I don't have the same strength. I don't have the same flexibility. Like, I'm out. I'm done. It's gone. It was a great part of my life while it lasted. And now it's time to move on to other things. Instead, I just went back to running and doing HIIT workouts, not as much as I had been in the past, but enough to 
keep me in relatively decent shape. That was October of 2016. Really just kind of hung around in California after that. Um, just doing the running and some basic exercise. And in June, no, in July of 2017, I found out I was pregnant, which was a big surprise. Um, big surprise. We were not expecting that. But I made a choice, and I decided to be a mom, and have a kid, and raise him, and do all of that. So that was difficult, too, because being pregnant with a spinal fusion was, for me, not fun. Maybe it's just the placement of where my fusion is. There was just a lot of weight, and a lot of pressure, and a lot of pain a lot of the time. I did not enjoy being pregnant, not one single day of it. Um, even without the spinal fusion, I had some other pregnancy issues that I had to deal with, so my experience was just not... <laughs> didn't care for it. And even though I ended up having like a normal birth with him, I wasn't a C-section patient or anything. It still took me a very long time to physically recover from having a child, and that was incredibly frustrating too. My body just, it, it took a lot more out of my body than just a normal person. So I didn't really even get back into working out until about 2019, 2020, when he was about a year and a half to two years old. And at that point, I was kind of like, okay, let me try this pull thing again. Like, my back has definitely healed more, and now I'm, like, healed from having a child. Like, let's, let's just give it another go. I ordered a pull. I put it up in my house in California. But again, it just wasn't the same. And just with life out there and how hectic and busy it was, I didn't have the time and dedication that I... I wanted to put into it. I also had a child I had to take care of now, and there was just a lot more on my plate. And then in 2020, we all know what happened in 2020, I ended up working from home for a lot of months, and <laughs> I found out the hard way that you can't eat Swiss cake rolls and Pringles for every single meal just it doesn't work especially if you're not moving <laughs> and burning off those calories so I ended up getting bigger than I had ever been in my life I was pushing even my pregnancy weight at that point I started walking and stuff more taking my kid out started running pushing him in the stroller and that helped but what I was doing was so minimal too that I was still, and I still am, bigger than normal, than for my normal. So, you know, that was 2020, like going into 2021, and in October of 2021, I decided I really had just had enough of California, and it was time to come back to Minnesota. So we moved back the end of October, and once I got back, I started reconnecting with all of, almost all of the girls that I danced with in 2014 and 2015, and that has been just absolutely wonderful. I, in November, I started taking dance classes at my friend's studio, and I started doing some hit classes at her studio also to just start building some strength. In November, I also started taking three Zoom flexibility classes every week, because when you start working on strength, you start to lose flexibility. And my back and my shoulders are incredibly locked up, so I want to gain strength 
and I want to lose some weight, but I also need to balance it enough where I'm gaining some flexibility at the same time. I also put my pole back up in my house and have just been really having fun finding a routine and getting back into things. And that's kind of leading into what this whole thing series is about. Basically, my plan here for this channel now is that I want to use it to document my process and my progress and the things that I'm doing to get back into pole. My ultimate goal is to perform on pole again. I would like to give myself about an 18 month goal for that and that just gives me a little extra time too just to be on the safe side because I have a lot of progress that I have to make. When I look back at who I was in 2015 compared to who I am now, it's a little rough looking at this one and it's harder for me to do things as this one. But the difference between the me now and the me in 2016 is I am okay now if I can't be the same dancer that I was before my accident. I am okay if I never get the same moves back. And I have accepted the fact that there is something in my body that I need to respect and I need to take care of for the rest of my life because it's not going anywhere. This is really a personal journey for myself and to keep me accountable to so that I stay consistent. So that I stay consistent and on track and have a way to almost journal this and visually look back at in 10, 15, 20 years. I videoed my entire first pole journey. I have everything on video from the day I got my pole to the day that I fell off of my pole and got hurt. And I'm so thankful and happy that I recorded all of that. But this time the experience is different and it's been very humbling so far. And I want to I want to record this journey back again. It's just a little bit different this time. There are just different variables that I have to deal with. And that's okay, because I'll figure it out. So basically what will happen is I'm going to do one vlog type video each week where I'll, I'll record everything, but I'm going to have just different benchmarks that I look at each week. So one week I'll look at my flexibility benchmarks, the next week I'll look at my strength benchmarks, week after that I'll look at like my health benchmarks, weight um, measurements, for example. And then the last week I will look at all of my pull uh, benchmarks. That way I can kind of visually keep tally of how everything is going. and. I would love for my 45 subscribers to stay on and just join me on this journey and watch and support and encourage and learn some new stuff too. I mean, there are pole classes pretty much everywhere. Maybe you'll find that this is something you really want to give a shot, and I think you should. <laughs> but also, I want to put this out too because I know what it's like to be someone who is recovering from an injury and missing out on the stuff you can't do, the stuff you love to do but can't do. And so if I can connect with someone who is struggling and having a hard time and in a similar position that I've been in, then that will bring me some joy too because I felt very alone 
and I don't want anyone else to feel alone because it sucks to be in this portion of your life. Like, it sucks to be the only one in your bubble that kind of really knows what you're going through. But I get you. So that's really it. Um, I don't want to make this too long. Plus, I'm really tired. This light is starting to hurt my eyes. And I'm going to have to like get to editing this at some point here, too. So I will leave it at that. I really hope that you enjoyed this little story time and background information. The others won't nearly be this long because it'll just be like a week of stuff that I'll be documenting. So with that being said, I'm going to get going and get to bed. But thank you for watching, especially if you watched the entire thing. I would love it if you would leave a comment down below and like and subscribe if you're not subscribed. And until I see you guys on the next one, just take care of yourselves and be safe. Have a good night.